Hey guys, welcome to part three of our dream retirement uh, series uh, for Travel for Treasure. Um, right from the word go, I just want to apologize for my voice. I've picked up a rotten cold. I think it's probably from sleeping with the aircon on and waking up at four o'clock in the morning for frozen like an ice cube. Um, but I've arrived safely in Bali. It's absolutely beautiful here and atmospheric. I uh, managed to get through customs okay, which was great. I was a little bit worried they would have an issue with my metal detecting equipment. But even though they searched me thoroughly, I got through customs just fine. I uh, managed to find my accommodation all right. And uh, and this is my first evening uh, on the beach uh, in front of where I'm staying, about a block away from where I'm staying. And uh, had a great look at the at the, at the view. Uh, beautiful light and I must say Bali is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life and I'm really excited and looking forward to spending some quality time here. Having said that you'll notice the black sand uh, in front of you there and uh, that was one of my other concerns was that the sand would be too mineralized to detect and that actually turned out to be the case. Um, about three o'clock in the morning, I gathered my gear and went down to the beach and uh, took my macro cruiser into the sea and switched it on and then walked back onto the beach to try and ground balance it. Um, normally that's not a problem for me and because Strand is my normal beach that I detect at. So that was not the case here. I couldn't get uh, my machine to work at all and uh, even when you take a pulse pinpointer and my Fisher F pulse and touch it to the sand it immediately starts uh, uh, beeping and um, so I had to go and search for white sand beaches somewhere and uh, that brings me to the next phase. So this is where I had lunch today and I hired a motorbike, a scooter. This is my scooter, quite a fancy one actually. It's a 150cc and max. And um, just on my way to the beach. Coconut girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I ordered myself a nasi goreng and uh, proceeded to go and look for Nelayan Beach uh, which I'd been told uh, was, the sand was more brown than black and I was hopeful that maybe I could get my machine to work in the brown sand. Uh, which is not too far from from where I'm staying at the moment. Um, Nelian is supposed to look something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. But in reality, when I got there, the beach, I just couldn't believe the amount of rubbish that was on the beach. It was like a dump site and quite disgusting. So after Nelian proved to be a washout, I consoled myself uh, with some lovely... Japanese ramen noodles um, at, a, at this place I found in Chenggu and planned my next day's trip uh, which is going to be to Padang Padang Beach and so I began my journey to Padang Padang. Uh, the traffic was terrible, it was about a two hour ride of the most hectic traffic I've ever experienced and quite exhausting. There was a bit of rain on the way as well and eventually I arrived at Padang Padang Beach. It's absolutely beautiful. It's in the Uluwatu area, south of the uh, Denpasar Airport. And it's not quite as developed as Changu. And I may have to come back here and spend some time uh, in some of the beaches here. There's not a lot of beaches. Most of the coastline is cliff. And what beaches there are are quite small. Um, this beach, Padang Padang, I would say is probably about the size of Bikini Beach in Gordons Bay.
Apparently, a monkey it? stole yeah, someone's back. wallet oh, with God, cash. Oh, God, they just stole the money out. I want to throw my money. <laughs> What's kind of cool is that the path down to the beach actually leads through almost like a cave where you have to walk down these steps and suddenly you come around the corner and it sort of reveals the beach. Uh, at first I couldn't believe the, the breathtaking beauty of this awesome beach. Look, it's very crowded so it'd be quite, quite difficult to detect there during the day. Um, with all the people lying on the beach. So probably when I detect this beach, I'll come at night. Um, uh, apparently it does stay open during the night. And so it'll just be me and the monkeys and I can detect the dry sand and the wet sand. Um, going into the sea is very, very trashy. This was really disappointing to me because all the YouTube videos I've seen on this beach have the water as being crystal clear. But um, in fact, uh, the water was again completely full of trash and plastic bags and bottles. And it, I, I, I went for a swim because I was so hot, but it was like swimming in a trash heap. It was, it, there were creepy things touching you all the time. And yeah, so also the visibility was very poor. Um, so snorkeling would be out of the question as well. Uh, so really it's an interesting beach because it's very crowded uh, and I think uh, it could yield some good uh, treasures uh, but we'll see and I'll definitely try it out one night uh, and let you know. On my way home from Padang I decided to ride across the peninsula uh, to Musa Dua which is where all the expensive hotels are uh, with beautiful white beaches, but con but access to the beaches is quite strictly controlled, and a lot of the hotels tend to regard the beachfront in front of their hotel as belonging to them. Um, and uh, so I eventually found a place where I could walk in between the hotels down to the beach, um, where there are uh, hotel guests right up uh, against the shore of the beach, as you will see. One of the positive things of this beach is that the hotels have a, a staff of people continuously cleaning and raking the beach and so the beach and the sea are nice and clean and one could snorkel here. Um, the downside is that you're under constant scrutiny of several security guards and coming to detect after hours having access to the beach would be difficult. I will probably settle um, north of this area in a place called Sanur, which is the old uh, beach area of Bali. Remember Bali was a Dutch colony for about 300 years. After that, the Japanese colonized it for three years. And so that area is a lot more relaxed and, and I may be able to do some metal detecting and find some old gold um, in the Sanur area, which also has white beaches. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Sun Tzu wrote in his book The Art of War that you must first ponder and deliberate and study the terrain before going into battle. So the first few days in Bali I've been doing exactly that, studying the terrain and strategizing. Another thing I wanted to do was check out the waterfalls in the Ubud area and, um, and possibly find uh, treasure where people have been swimming beneath the waterfalls and jumping into the pools, as you know rivers can also be a source of, of metal detecting fun. So I left early in the morning um, to go to Ubud yesterday morning. Um, it, and I was greeted with amazing sunrise um, and beautiful views as you go through the Bali countryside. Um, I met a, a lovely local guy 
called Agus and we had a long conversation and made good friends with each other and then close to where Agus lives there's a, uh, a f the most famous waterfall in Bali um, and uh, I decided to visit that waterfall uh, called Blangsinga and um, this is some footage I took of my trip to the waterfall. Uh, today is my last day in Bali per se. Tomorrow I'm going to take a fast boat to Lombok and, uh, and explore some of the islands around Lombok which are small islands. Um, lots of tourists go there and they're completely surrounded by white sand um, and there's not much surf and the snorkeling, the water is crystal clear for snorkeling. So the first part of this, um, uh, of this video, if you like, or of this series, um, um, the retirement adventure series, um, being a Travel for Treasure channel has dealt with a lot of travel. So <laughs> it's now time, I think, to, to deal with a bit of treasure and get some gold in the bank. Uh, being on a limited budget and having minimal equipment with me this time, um, I've, this entire video has been made uh, just using my iPhone. It's been um, filmed and edited uh, on on my iPhone and published on my iPhone. So, yeah, um, I, I, I apologize for the for the amateur <laughs> um, video footage, but. Uh, nevertheless, hopefully I will be producing some awesome content for you on my next trip uh, to the islands and I will be coming back to Bali to uh, do some detecting at some of the places I've shown you before. Uh, I'm just going for a week to start off with uh, to the islands and see what I can find there. So please tune in for the next one. Hopefully it'll be full of lots of yellow. Thank you very much for watching guys and please press the like button. Thanks. Bye.